Have you ever wondered how all these people are making such an amazing AI art and when you try to do something, it just... Yeah, it is okay, you know, but it's not the same level as what they're doing. And you know, maybe you're a creative, maybe you're an artist, maybe you're a designer and you're like, I know about this, I should be able to make masterpieces, you know, but you are not. And to be honest, this is what happened to me too. And this is when I started Googling how to get better at making AI prompts because I was, you know, a bit disappointed on the tool. I knew that it wasn't about the tool, it was the way that I was describing it to the tool. Because it's not the same if you ask Dali, Midjourney or whatever that you want a collage of a rabbit and you get this, you know, which is, yeah, a collage of a rabbit. It's not the same as if you ask it a surreal or novel collage of a rabbit chill wave aesthetic at dawn. This is the level of refinement that more experienced AI artists are actually providing to these AIs. Of course, this is only like a very short example. We could actually get into something more descriptive and actually specify what do we want to happen in the background, what do you want to happen in the sky, like what kind of color the fur of the rabbit is and these kind of things, you know? But just to make this quick example, I think you already got the idea of how you need to actually be more specific to these AIs in order to get better results. And that can get a bit complicated, you know, because in order for you to get to that level of description, you actually need to know about artistic movements, perspective, style and aesthetics, all the cores, you know, cottage core, vintage core, pace core, kid core, you know, like there are many cores right there and you might not know about them all, I don't know about them all. So my problem was that, was like, there's a lot of people who know a lot about aesthetics, who know about composition, who know about light, you know, they can create this atmosphere and I cannot. Also, when I was thinking about artistic movements, I would always go to the basic ones, you know, like to Baroque painting, Art Nouveau, like we did in the example, uh, brutalism, uh, renaissance painting, um, these kind of things. And there are like, I don't know, like hundreds of thousands of different art movements available, probably, you know? And this is why I was like, okay, I need to make a list. I need to make a list of all the different things that I could be using to make these prompts. I just need to make an ocean template, including all the different words. Let's call it words because I don't know how to call it, but all the different words that could help you, help me produce better prompts. Because we don't really need to be an encyclopedia with all these artistic art movements, you know. But what we want is that now that this Dali, Midjourney and so on are not free anymore, you actually need to pay to use them. We want to be able to make our art under a budget, you know. And this is why in this video I'm going to be sharing with you some tips on how to get better at making your AI art. Plus, I'm going to be sharing with you a link to my free Notion template, the one that I've been using to get better at making these prompts. But before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Martina, I'm a designer in creative technologies. And in this channel, we talk about topics related to creativity, innovation, and the future of technology. And mostly we cover topics related to augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, creative coding, and much more. Back to the video. When I started making art with AI, I was lucky enough to enter during the research phase when we were actually training those AIs by using them, so it was for free. But now that the research phase is no longer existing because we are in beta, making those art prompts actually costs money. But don't get me wrong because both Dali and Midjourney offer you a free trial when you register. And that made me realize that I have to be more conscious if I want to make proper prompts. And what is the problem with being more conscious when you're an artist and a creative that they're kind of cutting your wings, you know? And that is bad because sometimes creativity can get a bit messy. You need to really go to one way and then to the other one to actually get to the right approach. It's not like a linear approach, it's more like a really messy one. And of course, the same happens when you are trying to design with AI. Because you don't really know the tool that you are using, um, because it's pretty new, like who actually knows how this works, you know? And you don't really know what is it able to produce. For me, as a non-English native speaker, you know, um, many times I do mistakes when writing, so I need to double check that, which might be tip number one. Double check your spelling. <laughs> this is an improvised tip, but I realized like many times I would be making mistakes regarding that, regarding my spelling. 
and I would make typos and the AI is not really understanding those typos. Sometimes it does understand, but sometimes it just makes something that makes no sense because it missed the essence of what I wanted to ask. Now to a more thoughtful tip, which is being more thoughtful. Why? Because same as when you have to design, you cannot just be like, yes, I'm just going to sit down and start designing. This is not how it works. You actually need to have an idea in your mind of what you want to do. So my recommendation here is to have a clear idea in advance of what you want the AI to design. So you might want to consider asking yourself the following questions. What medium do I want to use? What kind of art do I want to create? What is the purpose of this art? What feeling or mood do I want to evoke? What is the overall tone or atmosphere I want to create? What is the point of view I want to convey? What is the setting or location of the art? What is the time period or era I want to depict? Once you have answered those questions, you are definitely going to have a clear idea in your mind of what you want to produce. That if answering those questions is hard for you, you might need some googling or some kind of support to help you complement that to help you answer those questions. And this is what happened to me. I was like, okay, what art movement I want to use now? And I would always go to the same styles over and over. Like I would be, yes, I want a Renaissance painting. I want an Art Nouveau one. I want brutalism, constructivism, Dadaism, you know, these kind of things that I remember from school. But I might remember, I don't know, about 10. That is like a very tiny portion of all the artistic movements that are available. So I had to make a notion database on that because I was like, okay, I cannot be googling all the time how many artistic movements are, you know, I actually need to write it down. And then I was like, okay, but we have more things to, to get to these better prompts, you know, we can think about perspective, about dimension, about what era we are talking about. And I was like, wait. This is becoming something, this is becoming something and it's becoming super useful, super helpful and I want to share this with you too because this has actually helped me so much when producing my art prompts. I literally don't think anymore, I just open my notion and I'm like, okay, I want a acrylic painting of a futuristic isometric abstract landscape uh, with uh, an infrared light and the overall mood of this is going to be evil and with this you get to something that is very random that you might never have imagined but just by having this list just by having this database you are able to produce it and yeah maybe you get to something too random and you're like but i'm not going to be using this and just prompt it because i'm going to be exhausting all my prompts with random stuff Yes, I'm not telling you to just do anything from here and just use it. No, what I'm telling you is that when you have answered all these questions and you have a clear idea in your mind of what you want to produce, take the database and refine what you thought. Refine it with a different artistic movement, refine it with a different aesthetic, a different perspective, a different medium also. If you do want to experiment and just want to have fun with AI, you don't really want to produce something, you know, realistic, or you don't really want to make art, you just want to see how crazy it can get, respecting guidelines, you know, then this checklist is actually amazing because it just can get to the most random combination ever without you even having to think about it. But one of the most important things here is that you really need to understand what tool are you going to be choosing. Same as you're not going to be designing a magazine with Figma, you're going to be using InDesign for that, or you're not going to be designing a website with InDesign, you're going to be using Figma for that. You're not going to be using DALI to create an artistic interpretation of a painting. I mean, you could do that, but you know that Midjourney is better at that, you know. If you want to know more about what DALI is good at, in this other video, I actually use it to make logos, packaging, website, and much more. To all of these, why do I recommend making art with AI? Basically for three main reasons. The first one is that you can create in different styles and different techniques that you never thought you would be able to. The second one is because it can allow you to break all these creativity boundaries and just start creating. And the third one is because it's going to be speeding up your creative process so you can actually focus on thinking and refining rather than getting into those 
first stages of the project where you don't really know what you're doing and you are sometimes just wasting time. Let me now give you a walkthrough of this template. As you can see, here we have this checklist, database, however you want to call it, with all the different recommendations that I told you before. We have realism, dimension, artistic movement, medium, timeline, perspective, aesthetic, atmosphere, and mood. Under instructions and tips, I added some recommendations and examples of how you could be using this, which can be helpful if you are new to making art with AI. So for example, here I took the realism column and I selected that I wanted surreal. So I get a surreal art novel because this is part of the artistic movements that we have in that column. Collage as medium of a rabbit. This is my personal partition, you know. And then chill wave for aesthetic because of aesthetics, at dawn, atmosphere. And this is how we get this surreal, art nouveau, collage of a rabbit, chill wave for aesthetic, at dawn, which looks pretty cool. I made it with Dali too. Then here you have the questions that I already specified in this video, so no need to write them down. You can just copy paste them from here or answer them here, whatever. And then just some specifications on how to use the template if you are new to Notion and how to contact me. And then we have a section that is called Playground that since it's very close to the checklist, it can help you kind of write down this prompts, kind of very really like sketching those ideas. And how I would be using this? Well, let's do an example right now. So let's say I want, uh, let's use it, this one because it's closer, a sci-fi mm, Dada What else we have here? Dada how do you render? No. Mm, movie poster. Of uh, solar punk landscape. Landscape with fluorescent lightning lightning no lighting <laughs> first and lighting mm. and the mode is evil now let's copy paste this and let's see what we get and this is what we got since we were asking for the movie poster, this option actually gave us the lettering. So we have the title of the movie here. The other ones are kind of missing it, but you know, we know that AIs are not that good with text. So this is something that we will be grabbing Photoshop, Figma, whatever, and just do it after. That's good. And what I love of this is that this is not something that I would just think about, you know, about solar punk, fluorescent, this is not my style, you know, but when I have it here, it kind of allows me to be more creative, to expand the boundaries of what I will be doing and just be more curious. So now let's say that I like this solar punk. So what I'm going to be doing is just to save it as favorite. And now here we have this solar punk aesthetic saved as a favorite. So every time that we like something, we can just literally just select it, save it to favorite. And this time we don't need to think that much anymore. We can just find it here. If you like this template and you also want to grab your free copy, remember that the link is in the description. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. You know, like getting started with AI or getting started with any other different medium is just hard at the beginning. It needs a little bit of training, a lot of practice and experimentation. And I just thought that it would be good to have a tool to help you, to help me produce these arts in a more efficient way. Also to kind of keep track of what we like, of saving it in favorites and yeah. This is only version 1.1, 1.0 of this template because I'm a newbie in making art with AI, so of course I'm not the expert that is going to know everything about it. I'm just getting started, same as you are. 
and that's it happy ai prompting or uh, whatever people are calling this if you are also making art with ai let me know in the comments let me know on instagram i want to meet more people who is interested in this because i think it's very fascinating i think that this is the future of our profession and again this is something that we don't need to fear we actually are going to be using this as a way to speed up our creative process and i'm not going to get tired of saying this i actually made a video about this topic <laughs> if here if you want to watch it as always thank you so much for watching i hope you liked this video if so let me know in the comments give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and see you soon bye